didn't see you there. All right, well, I guess since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my perspectives in media literacy questions, um, or do the questions, I guess. Um, so why not get started? So the first question is, describe something specific that we did in class that was memorable or unexpected and explain why. Hmm. Something memorable or unexpected. I have to say when we did the um, global summit the other week, it was really unexpected and kind of unplanned. And I walked in and I wasn't sure what we were doing or how it would affect um, or what it had to do with like being, you know, media literacy or anything. And after like getting started on it and, you know, taking on the perspective of someone from Ghana or I think I was from the Congo, it's from the Congo, um, and like reading what was going on and how electronics were affecting their country and trying to put myself in their shoes. It was just really eye opening and really memorable to like listen to, you know, everybody tell their story and <clears throat> just see like how our media usage, our technology that we use to view media is affecting the world um, and how it's made. Um, we often in media literacy, you know, we talk about what is being shown to us, but we don't think of what it's being shown to us on. So that was really, really interesting and cool. I also really, really loved um, when we did like stand up, sit down, especially the day when, when uh, Dr. Emin asked us questions about the um, like if we knew state birds or like different things in nature and then turn around and asked us like if we knew this pop singer, if we know this or whatever and to see how many people could identify birds versus pop culture it was really really fascinating and kind of crazy so yeah that's kind of what I was thinking for that so next up is if you were on your way to class and someone asked you what is media literacy anyway how would you describe it for them all right so media literacy it's a big term it encompasses a lot um, but I think for somebody who was wanting to know exactly what media literacy is it's being aware of the media knowing that it is a part of our everyday lives almost our 24 7 lives and knowing that we need to be critical thinkers when it comes to media and what is honest and truthful and what is you know, dangerous and how we can, you know, make a difference and make people aware that the media um, molds and shapes the way that we view things and to sometimes call into question what they are shaping. Um, I think that's that's kind of what I would think about it. It takes me back to like the first article we read about the guy um, who graduated who was making up um, Republican biased articles uh, during the elections. They weren't even true, but the one about the ballots, um, the hidden ballots and Hillary. Um, you know, just being aware, um, knowing what to look for in finding fake media and fake news and, you know, just what you post. Being, being aware that, you know, everything you post, everything you look at, like there's a consequence and people are watching and um, being aware just being aware of what's out there and what the media is doing. So the next, I'm gonna to go to this link. It's for our Emerging Ideas Padlet from week five. So I gotta pull this up. Give me just a second. Um, emerging Ideas Media Padlet, okay. Um, so this says revert, revisit our Emerging Ideas Padlet from week five. How has your understanding of media literacy changed since February? Discuss not only how it may have changed, but why or why or what caused this shift in your ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and read what I posted um, on this Padlet. And this says, um, I said back in February, uh, coming into media literacy, honestly, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. 
So far, I've learned so much more about media and how to better read and comprehend it than I did before coming into this course. Of course, I was fairly certain about uh, when to be sus suspicious of certain articles and advertisements, but I know, but I know being media literate, literate is more than that. I always knew media had an influence on my life, but since starting this class, I'm definitely finding it uh, way more than I originally thought. Almost feels like an a matrix mentality. Media literacy, in part, is being aware that media shapes our perspectives of, of the world and how we can better question it and learn who to trust. It's also about helping others to understand this ever-evolving matter that has an impact on our daily lives. Lots. Um, so how has it changed since week five? Um, I'm definitely still with the idea that it's this very, uh, very much a matrix mentality of um, questioning reality or virtual reality, um, the news and the um, things that we view on the web and on TV <clears throat> and on our phones and everything else, um, because we can never really be truly certain of what is real and what is fake. Um, everybody has a persona on, uh, on in the media and on social media and everything. Um, I like that I go back to like this idea of being aware. Um, it's definitely what this course is all about, is just being aware. Not necessarily, you know, saying that the media is bad, because the media is not all bad. But it's definitely this idea that just being aware of what's out there, um, being aware of what it's telling people and what it's telling us, and how to, you know, I guess how to be more in tune and more um, astute, maybe, um, to what is being said. And um, knowing that it isn't just, you know, fake news versus real news. It's also, you know, how do advertisements shape our mentalities and what we see. Um, knowing that advertisements are kind of everywhere. Um, I go back to my privacy prowl. I mean, I got a lot back on my privacy prowl. And so just being aware that like they're watching and there's no rules for privacy. And so just being completely, you know, open to knowing that, you know, when you, whatever you post, whatever you're looking for, it's subject to, you know, being looked at by people we don't know. Um, so this idea of w awareness is definitely something that still sticks strong. Um, not really sure how it's changed. I think for me, it's just kind of grown um, to encompass, you know, eco media literacy was something that I never even thought about, about how the way, you know, advertisements show the world. It's just one of those things you don't really think about, but it's there. And so I think, you know, encompassing that and realizing that, um, there are bias agendas out there, you know, pushed by, you know, certain groups and just knowing, you know, what to look for and, um, I think, think that's really interesting. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of how, I don't know if that's really how it evolved, but it's definitely grown for me, um, to encompass more than just like advertisements. So next, it says, describe a piece of media that you created or consumed recently and your thoughts about it or experiences with it. So I'm going to go back to my privacy prowl because this was something that completely and totally just blew my mind. Because I have social media, like most people my age. Um, but when it came to advertisements, you become so desensitized to what you're looking at that you kind of just ignore it. You don't really think about like, oh, they're showing me this or oh, they're showing me that. So to really sit down every day and take the time out of my day to, um, you know, look for cars and then watch what rolled in to my email, to my social media, to, you know, stuff that I was looking at for my homework was crazy. Um, the fact that like when I was trying to read and like get better information for a reading on for one of my courses that I was just constantly being distracted by car ads and specifically the car ad that I was looking at from one of the specific websites 
was absolutely insane and it was everywhere I went no matter what website this carguru.com was totally trying to get me to buy a car and it's like they knew that like I had the means or like I was I was I don't know it was crazy it blew my mind so definitely being aware of that and and it kind of when when the privacy prowl came up um I kind of started paying more attention to the ads I hadn't started actually looking at cars when it first like came up but I had been looking at like uh UNC basketball championship shirts and next thing I knew like dick sporting goods I guess I'm like registered to their emailing list and it was just dick sporting goods dick sporting goods all over my Facebook all over Tumblr Twitter any site that I visited was Dick Sporting Good. Your championship t-shirt is here. Come grab it. And I was just like, whoa, what? So I think that was crazy. It blew my mind. And it was also kind of scary because, like, so many people knew that I was looking for a car or knew that I was looking for championship t-shirts. Like, I, as a private person, like, I felt totally invaded. So, yeah, that was, that was crazy. So the next question is, describe one aspect of your life that is influenced by media that you didn't think about before and now you do. Use details and be specific about your thinking and has it changed? Hmm. One aspect of my life that was influenced by media. Um, hmm. Describe one aspect of your life that was influenced by media, that is influenced by media that you didn't think about before now. I think I'm going to go back to eco media literacy. Um, that's one thing that honestly I never gave any thought about. Um, and the fact that like the car commercials that I see on TV regularly every single day or the Samsung unbox your phone ads or, you know, just the TV ads that go for you know, the outdoors and, you know, use it as their platform to um, sell their product. But we don't really think about um, how it really affects how we view the environment. Um, that's something that's really been, really been weighing on my mind recently. Um, excuse me. I think it's just changed. I think, you know, being more aware that, like, just because they use the outdoors doesn't mean they're totally advocating for, like, a better planet or, a, you know, um, you know, getting outside and being active in, it, in the outdoors. I mean, for Samsung, looking at that, it was like, you don't even need to go outside to see the outdoors. You, you can have it on your phone right here like it looks just as cool and just as clear and like you don't even have to leave your home you don't even have to leave your room to see the outdoors or you know the fact that like these jeep commercials that show jeeps just like climbing over mountains and um you know tearing up terrain and things like you don't think about how that's affecting our world and the place that we live in um i mean we have to remain here for however long that we can and if we're ruining our planet we're ruining it for generations to come and we have to be very careful about you know what we're doing to it but the thing is these advertisements don't tend to advocate that they um more or less kind of say the planet is your oyster and you can do whatever the heck you want to it and so what so be it so definitely think you know eco media literacy um and being more aware of how ecosystems and the world is affected um, through the media that we view and how it changes our attitudes is definitely um, definitely something important and it's definitely changed my you know awareness and what I look at and you know how I view certain advertisements in question you know if they have an agenda for a certain you know platform or whatever so next is how has your understanding of literacy been impacted by our classwork and activities um so being literate i think it's important first we're going to look up a definition of what it means to exactly to be literate so or literacy we'll look up literacy 
So literacy is essentially the ability to read and write. I knew that, but I wanted to have a Webster's. Uh, so yeah, the ability to read it and write. So I think for me, um, looking at literacy and how understanding literacy has impacted my classwork, I mean, you know, as an English major, I have to dive, I have to be literate and I have to be able to read into um, certain pieces, especially with film studies, you know, how, what, what a film's trying to do or, you know, what a piece of literature is trying to get across and not just, you know, the summary or the major themes, um, how it's affecting that time period, etc. Um, so I think, you know, my understanding of being literate in this case scenario is just being aware of I guess or how it says how has your understanding of literacy been impacted by our classwork or activities so basically for me um, by working on like mise-en-scene and you know the advertising portfolio it's impacted my literacy in that I don't just look deeper when I'm watching a movie or I'm watching or reading a book it's more or less in in my everyday life you know think deeper about um you know what you're watching um you know what you're viewing you know think deeper what are they trying to get across um and is this a, is this a positive perspective to have i think that's really important is think about it but also is it positive or negative and are they providing you with something good or are they providing you with something awful? Like, it just goes either way. And I think, you know, looking deeper into how, you know, with mise-en-scene, how, you know, scenes and different things are formed um, and, and what props and things go into it to, like, shape the way we view it. Um, it's important to apply to everything, um, everything we view, everything we do um, with media. Um, and then looking at, you know, advertisements, especially with the advertising portfolio and seeing how, you know, how they try to persuade us to think one way, you know, with women or with men. I mean, you know, Marlboro and the Marlboro man is like, you know, macho and you got to be macho. And then you have Victoria's Secrets, like, unless you're skinny and, you know, wearing their bras and you're skinny and you're petite and you do this, like, you're not sexy. Like, what kind of attitude are those those things bringing and I think it's made me a more literate person outside of what I've learned just in my core classes with film and English which has been really really awesome um so the next question is let's see how many more we got because it's a long video how do media shape our understandings of individuals society societies and cultures with what effects well, media shapes the world we live in. There's no denying that. I mean, it's completely has con it has control over our, our whole perspective. Um, so I think you know it shapes our understandings in that you know it can make us very very biased, and it can make us very very open at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense, but it can. And um, I think it just depends on the media you're viewing, honestly. Um, you know, if you're if you're watching biased media, then you're going to have, you know, certain mentalities towards certain groups of people, certain societies, certain cultures. I mean, you know, take, for example, Fox News, you know. I want you to think everybody in the Middle East is a terrible person. Um, that's not true. Like, so I think, um, you know, the way it shapes our understandings of individuals. I mean, I also look at social media with individuals, especially um, our, under our understanding is whatever they post. So if you're on social media and all anybody posts is the good stuff then all you're gonna have is this perspective of the kind of person they are when things are good. You don't see the behind the scenes when they're hurt or when they're down, or the people who share everything, you kind of look at them and it shapes your perspective because you're like, why are you sharing so much on social media? Like, don't you want privacy? Like, 
So definitely, definitely, you know, it just depends on what you're looking at. Um, it just, you know, and, and it affects us in that, you know, it creates biases in, you know, what we believe about people and, you know, what we believe about certain cultures. Um, going back to, like, the Fox News, I mean, it's led a lot of people to believe that, you know, the Islamic culture is absolutely terrible and full of terrible people who all want to kill Americans. And while that m could be true for some of them, because you never know, it doesn't stand for a whole group. So, you know, or, you know, with Christians, you know, it's like, we don't, don't all, we're not all homophobes or, you know, terrible people. Like, we just... We just get that name because that's how, you know, certain groups want us to look because that's what the media says, is that we all hate these people. So just being aware of how it shapes us um, and how it shapes our mindset um, of certain people in certain groups, certain cultures, um, it can be very detrimental, um, you know, for certain people to buy into certain things, um, which is really bad. It can lead to you know, racism, sexism, you know, xenophobia, whatever. So you just have to be careful. So next, is how does media literacy impact your career goals and aspirations? If there is no impact, discuss why you feel that way. I, for one, am definitely been impacted by this class um my career goals and aspirations are to get into the film business specifically i'd love to get into acting so for me being more media literate um media media literacy literate ugh, has made me want to you know impact the way the media shapes the mentality around women um because i for one will never be a small person i am five seven and i I'm very built <laughs> and you know I will never be a size zero and for me I want to use you know by being media literate I want to be able to show other people that you know not all women have to look a certain way and not all you know girls all girls are made differently and and also make girls aware that like we all see things in ourselves that we don't like and that's okay but it's also okay to love yourself and I think that's one thing that I really want to advocate um, with my career goals and just you know being aware of you know how media is how my the media I'm going to make is going to impact people and hopefully by being literate use it to impact people positively so yeah that's kind of what I'm thinking we'll see what happens I would love to use that platform and be you know a positive role model so, next one. To what extent do you feel it is important for people to learn how to analyze and evaluate the media that surrounds them? Urgh, that's an interesting one. So, to what extent do you feel it is important for people to learn and to analyze and evaluate the media that surrounds them? That is, it is so important. I'm not even going to lie. It is so important. Because if you don't analyze, if you don't evaluate, then you're going to be completely oblivious to all the messages and all the things that are being put into your brain and creating certain mentalities. Whether it be, you know, a liberal bias, a conservative bias, a racist bias, whatever. You have got to be aware of what is being fed to you and really question if that is, you know, a, a positive and pure of heart and everything else like you just got to be aware like there's no no way around it like I, I just it's so important to just look at media and be like hey I gotta question this whether it's positive or not you gotta question it because even the most positive of things can have a negative impact or the most positive sounding things can have a negative impact so yeah, it is extremely, extremely important for everyone to learn to, you know, analyze media, analyze and evaluate media. I go back to like, you know, the 40 and 50 year olds who are using Facebook and, you know, 
spreading, you know, fake news on certain subjects. I mean, they're they're not media literate at all, and they're being gullible. It's it's leading for them to be gullible about you know certain things in, in our world. It's not healthy, um, and it, it's creating these kind of like negative mindsets. These people who are just I don't know grumpy and grouchy, and it's just like be more aware, question, read more than one source, look into it, be open to different points of view. Not saying you know change your opinion, but be open. Know that it's not always the truth. Um, the next one is, hmm, there's one more on here, and I don't see it, so let me go back, because I saw another one that I wanted to answer as well. Maybe it's a later... I guess not. Never mind. It's not what I thought it was. Um, so the next one says, to what extent do you feel, oh no, I just, I just did that one. So, or, yeah, no, this is it. To what extent do you feel it is important for people to learn how to create or produce their own media and to disseminate it or share it? I don't know if it's necessary for people to create or produce their own media. Um, I think if you're interested in that aspect, then totally go for it and share it and use it in a positive light because the world needs a little bit more positivity. Um, there's a lot of negative stuff going on right now. Um, but I don't think it's like necessary for everyone to create and produce their own media. Um, but I think if people are interested in media, you know, just learning to be aware of it, learning um, if there, you are going to make it, you know, what kind of impact it can have, um, and, and who you're gearing it towards and just being aware of, you know, the mindset that could come out of it. Um, so yeah, I don't necessarily think it's important for people to create and produce media. Um, but if you are, you know, going to share it, you know, use it positively, um, use it to share a good message. Um, yeah, that's about all I have for that one. And then it says, how do people learn to analyze, evaluate, or create media? Um, how do people learn to, I think just by being able to take courses, um, you know, and, excuse me, how do people learn? I mean, it's just sometimes it's trial and error you know reading something and then finding out that oh this isn't true but I definitely think you know the more people that were to take a media literacy class I think excuse me should be required and it should be you know it's very useful um and so I think you know if there's, there's a course offered um they should take it but also you know just by word of mouth by us as students who have taken this course going out there and talking to people and sharing with people, you know, what we've learned and how to be, you know, how to help people be aware um, in what they view. I think we as a community of media makers, um, you know, by creating media and by talking to others and using it that way, you know, we can make people more media literate, more media literate. But we have to be willing to speak up and speak out and, you know, share with them, you know, these ideas. And also, if people want to learn, they have to be open to the idea that everything they view, you know, has an impact. And it is what it, like, it's not, you can't just take it at face value. Um, so, I think it's both sides. Like, if people want to learn, they have to be willing to. And then on the side of, like, people you know, teaching it and media makers making, helping with awareness, like, we have to be able to know what's going on, being aware and telling others. So other comments are thoughts and questions. I don't really have any questions, but I do have to say this. 
am very grateful for taking this class. It has opened my mind up to all the ways that media impacts everything that we look at. Um, every way that they, yeah, it does. Um, but how it shapes our world. You know, I, you, for me, I'd never really given much thought to it. And then coming into this course and doing the advertising portfolio and all these projects and sitting in class and, you know, listening to what other students have to say and their opinions and everything. It's just... It's been truly eye-opening, and I've really enjoyed the class. And, you know, it's made me, you know, hopefully a better media maker because of it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens after graduation and where the road takes me and hopefully using, using it in a positive way. So thanks for a great semester.